All this is Dr. Mobin Sayed from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show for today. So there are three things that I want to discuss today. Number one, the CDC is saying that, hey, we have approved the Johnson & Johnson, or we have lifted the pause from it. We're going to talk about that. Second one is uh, about the Novavax and where do they stand? Short answer is don't know yet. And then thirdly, from Israel, we have a couple of studies. One, <laughs> excuse me, one is a study and one is a statement from their health, one of the health uh, uh, organizations about the efficacy of Pfizer. And that is the difference from other efficacy results that we've been seeing is that this is a large scale result. In one of the uh, cases, the people who were observed are 1.4 million. In the other cases, 1.2 million. So these are large population sizes to observe and see the efficacy. So these are the basic three discussions today. Uh, very quickly for the Ivermectin conference, it is tomorrow and day after. Today, I would probably not do a chit chat or maybe a shorter one I have to go over everybody's bio and kind of uh, do my rehearsals with the <laughs> with my messages. So uh, plus, I think I would like to sleep a little earlier as well. The for my time, the conference starts 5:30 a.m. So I, I'll have to kind of wake up five and get ready and start at 5:30. Six is when we'll go live. So please wish me luck and, <laughs> and we'll we'll do that. So thank you very much for being here. Let's start our discussions. So this is uh, drbean.com. This is a news about Novavax. I'll go over that in a second. This is uh, CNN talking about the uh, vaccine. So I am more con so if you don't like CNN, that is fine. What I am more concerned here is the statements by various doctors who are participating. This is the one of the translated uh, statement from one of the uh, agencies from Israel. We'll discuss this as well. And the credit goes for these news goes to our cool bean, David, who was with me a few days ago as well. David has been very graciously continuing to look into uh, more information and news. And as he finds them, he's sharing them with me and is uh, translating and helping. So David, thank you very much from all of us. This is the study that we would discuss today. Uh, this is a diagram in the study that I would like to show. And then if somebody is interested, what does risk reduction mean? Uh, then there is a nice little article to look at that as well. And as a bonus for today, before we start, here is my latest artwork that I did, I think, um, yesterday. So this is a, a stormy um, cloud with C. So let's start. Um, The first thing that I wanted to discuss is the Novavax. That is a quick uh, read, and we can go over that very fast. So I would start from the last statement here. The US trial is expected to report results this quarter. So we are April, May, June. So we can go up to June as well. And an FDA EU application will follow after that. So maybe it is this month. Maybe it is uh, the month next or after. So we do not know yet. Here, they said last month, Novavax reported impressive results from the UK and South Africa trials. Its vaccine was found to be 96% effective against the original coronavirus, 86% effective against the B117, that is the UK variant, uh, and 49% against the dangerous B131, uh, 351, which is the South African variant. Alarmed by the reduced efficacy rates on variants, the com company is developing a new vaccine specifically tailored to the South African strain. So that is the Novavax news. There is not much. This news is actually one day old. So 422. Today is 423. And uh, while talking about this, I, I was feeling guilty when I said B117 variant prevalent in the UK. And the guilty especially today because this morning or a couple of days ago, I had done a discussion about the mutants in India, not a couple of days ago, I think about a week ago. And in that, I said there was a doctor from India who said we should accept it, that we have an Indian variant and we should focus on that and see uh, how to contain it. And somebody had commented that you are racist. Why do you call it Indian uh, variant? 
and poor UK and poor South Africa and, and uh, Brazil, we have been calling these B117s UK variant and Kent variant all along. And they have just not said as much in terms of we being racist, racist or not. So anyways, this is the Novavax. Moving forward, CDC. So the bottom line here is that they have said 10 to 4. So one person was absent today in the uh, voting process. 10 people voted yes. One person, uh, four people voted no, doctors, all of them, to lift the um, pause on, John, on uh, Johnson & Johnson. What is interesting for me, and I would talk about that in a second, let's just see. So here, somebody who objected, what are they saying? I did not object to the recommendation of lifting the pause. I objected to the absence of any kind of guidance from us, said Dr. Sarah Long, a professor of pediatrics at Drexel University College of Medicine. So this is the kind of message that I have been giving for since I talked about AstraZeneca and have become the the butt of people's, you know, the punching bag, bag for uh, people's uh, emotions. But important thing is that these cases can still be saved if we tell the doctors what to do. So in that uh, area, here is the only good news in this whole thing. And that is next week, the CDC has scheduled a telephone briefing for doctors and other clinicians to explain the changed recommendations and lay out the symptoms of and treatments for thrombotic, thrombocytopenic uh, symptoms or, or this disease. That is the only good part here. Then if you see here, they keep saying the same thing as we saw in, in Europe as well, that hey, the risk uh, benefit analysis shows that the benefit is more. American Medical Association runs to FDA and CD, CDC and says, we'll work with you to figure out what is the right thing to do here. So that is just their political positioning. They have actually been on the wrong side of the history many times during this pandemic. Uh, then over here, this is somebody putting some statements out that, hey, if the, the, the vaccine is not given and actual COVID is gotten, then that is more dangerous. Then another interesting thing, Moderna's and Pfizer's vaccines have not been linked with the blood clots. So this is compared to the UK study that said that Moderna, Pfizer, and AstraZeneca, or and Johnson Johnson, they all have it. Here we have a line that says um, it's not there. The CDC did not consider a gender. So this is what made my blood boil. Let's see if you can, you can spot what happened. The CDC did not consider a gender-based restriction Oliver said, she's, I think, uh, one of the directors from CDC, because it would be too hard to explain, even though the risk of blood clots appear to be very low among men. So if I'm reading between the lines, I may be totally wrong here. What she's saying is that if we say that women should not be given this vaccine and only men should get it, then it will become very difficult to explain to men that why they can get it and women cannot get it. And that the men would have concern and they would say, well, I don't want it either and so on. And it would be too hard to explain. We have been explaining these concepts for a year without any issues. CDC cannot explain. That is the reason that they said, fine, let's just continue. So this, this really made me mad. And apologies for my... Um, uh, my emotion here. The other thing that I felt was um, not right was this one. Uh, not right, or which kind of made me mad was this. There will also be a morbidity and mortality weekly report. So this is their preparation to say, you know what? We will, we will have the death report every week. And that is how we'll stay ahead. The people who died, they would not come back with these reports. Ideally, what should have happened is to say, Women under 50 years of age should not be given this vaccine. They can have the other vaccines. We in the U.S. are not short of vaccine. The news is there are more vaccine than the takers. So why couldn't we just say, you know what? So then there are weird. Um, I know that I'm going to get my uh, account closed or somebody writing me a letter again from these organizations. Um, 
the these excuses to say that you know this is one dose and there are so there is a doctor's comment over here that my patients want one dose and they want they have to go to work can you imagine a doctor's thinking in that way that it is okay to continue because his patients want one dose um there were a couple of more such things that were really just stupid in general a basic very common common sense would have been to say we have ample doses of vaccine everyone can get vaccine women in this age should not be given johnson and johnson let them have pfizer or moderna there is another challenge in here they don't tell you which vaccine is going to be given so when i got my appointment or my wife or my son they don't tell you which vaccine is there you have to reach there to find out that if that vaccine is something that you can take or not and they're saying well we would make women aware we'll put it on the label that hey this can cause there is the risk of uh, thrombosis there is, i read that over here and i said that does not help what would help is to say here is a protocol if you want to lift it for women as well make a protocol to say that hey when we'll give you this vaccine we will then do a follow up and if we see this this and this we would then work on it this the only caveat to my statement here is that they're saying next week we would work on this so maybe they'll actually come back with a protocol so maybe i am upset prematurely and we should wait for that but anyways uh, this is the discussion for this one now let's go to our own discussion for the gifts for humanity parts and let's look at what we are seeing in israel so once again i think we have to be grateful to israel israel that they have uh, on one end there is a benefit to them that they said hey give us the vaccine on priority basis with with pfizer and then in return we'll give you data this data is very very useful so first of all here <clears throat> this translation which would appear here this let's just look at this translation itself as well so this is professor blitzer uh, pfizer's vaccine efficacy is be better than we thought recent results published this morning after analyzing the data so this is 22nd april so today is 23rd so it is yesterday i believe recent results published this morning after analyzing the data 1.4 million of the funds insured show that a week after the second dose a week after the second dose so let me actually go to my uh, <laughs> illustration so this is the first dose this is the second dose one week after the second dose is when they started measuring the efficacy 1.4 million people were included and what they saw was that the disease prevention was 96% which is awesome severe disease prevention was 95% which is also awesome so this is a week after the second dose i am sure that two weeks after the second dose would be even better because remember that study that said that between the week 1 to 2 we still found some uh, infections and after week 2 there were no infections so i think that if we see the study after the week 2 this would be even improved so anyways this is one news very recent and now the second study this study compared to the discussion that we just did this study has a so be aware this study is dose 1 and then dose 2 so there are three slots that they have discussed so just be aware of that they they have discussed efficacy after the dose 1 as well i think it is useful to know because some of the cool beans have been saying that maybe i should just take one dose and you would see that it is not really that uh, that powerful but still there are some highlights so clalit health is the one the data is from december 20th to february 1st the people in this study were 596618 so about 600000 people in the vaccinated group and they took a control group which was very uh, diligently matched to uh, this group that was vaccinated and the control group were the folks who were not um vaccinated and they matched them so diligently that they say that we had to actually remove 34% of the participants in our study because 
we could not find their equivalent on the uh, non-vaccinated side. Or the non-vaccinated side became vaccinated by the time the comparisons were being done. So they had to purge about 34% of the participants, which is excellent. So that means they did their best to create a matching group or cohort. Now, how did they report their data? The data is reported with dose one and then 14 to 20 days after the dose one. So why is this? Why not from day one after the dose one? They said that the duration, December to February, in this time frame, there was a spike as well because of the variants that had arrived. And because of that, there was an initial increase um, chances of infection after the first dose as well. So they took a period of uh, time that was a little more vaccine affected time. So they said we used 14 to 20. Number one, that is one window. Then they saw 20 to 27. That is the second window. Then they saw the efficacy after seven days of the dose two. So please keep these three windows in your mind. One, two, and three. So let's start seeing the results. Results are actually very simple. These results are here as well. And they have beautiful data available. So that is a good part. I am actually looking at this one with you. So here is what they're saying. <clears throat> so 14 to 20 days after the dose one. So if you have, uh, let's say if you're thinking that, hey, I want to have the dose one and I want to see what happens and I, I'm not going to go for dose two, which I don't recommend. But let's say somebody has decided that in that case, check out that within 14 to 20 days, the infection prevention efficacy is not great. 46% efficacy to prevent infection. 57% efficacy to prevent symptomatic infection. So that means infection can occur, but symptomatic infection is a little better prevented. 74% efficacy from hospitalization. So that is better. That's good. 62% efficacy from severe disease. So chances are more than reduced, more than half. And then 72% efficacy from COVID related death. So that means after dose one, this to me, it is, yes, it is better, but it is not that great. So my point is, please don't take the first dose and then think that you are protected. This is a message to myself as well. I also feel that somehow I've gotten the vaccine and now I'm protected, but it's only 15 days. If it is 21 to 27 days, so that is the next one week, then the documented infection, meaning somebody develops the symptoms and they get the test and test is positive. So 60 Symptoms or somehow they documented. So symptomatic illness is the next one. Documented infection, 60% efficacy. Symptomatic infection, 66% efficacy. Hospitalization, 78% prevention, efficacy. Severe disease, 80%. So it has improved. And death, 84%. So there is still a chance of dying after getting the first dose within 20 to 20, um, 24 to what, what was that? 21 to 27 days. There's still a chance of dying. So there were people who got the vaccine and then they died as well um, because they were in this window of time and they caught infection. Then seven days after the dose two, this is declared complete protection time. Although from the previous study that I mentioned a few minutes ago as well, I would recommend that Pfizer and Pfizer says that, hey, instead of seven, our protection starts from 14 days after the second dose, because 14 days after even the variants were not able to infect the person. That is a study we saw a few days ago. So, but because this is what is declared in the trial, so seven days after documented infection, protection from that 92%. Symptomatic illness protection from that, 94%. So as you can see that the efficacy has gone up. Hospitalization, 87%. So that means it's still not 100% protection from hospitalization. 
it can still occur, but efficacy is very good. Severe disease, 92%, and death not applicable because there, there was nobody died who they were measuring during this time frame. So good efficacy, seven days after the second dose. What is my takeaway from this? Uh, my takeaway is that once you have the first dose, please don't bank on that to say first dose is enough. Plus, I would also add one more comment here. What is not studied very well is that if somebody just has the one dose, what happens after 30 days? What happens after 40 days, 50 days? That is not known yet. Maybe just like with AstraZeneca studies or with the UK studies that they have seen that efficacy continues to increase. Maybe that is the way it is. Over here, that data is not done. And that would mean, let's say you are going to believe in taking a vaccine, only one dose, then waiting three months for it to become highly efficacious, which it may or may not be. Then you have to be very careful for these three months as well. So here the data is only available till the 27 days. And that data is not very impressive. It is good, but it is not impressive. Now some notes. So seven days after dose two, compared to the trial result, in the trial, Pfizer had announced 95% efficacy in this larger cohort, almost 600,000 in one group and 600,000 in other 1.2 million people's observation. They found this, the uh, vaccine to be 94% efficacious, which is very close to what they saw in the trial. So that is good. Between dose one and two, between dose one and two, trial had announced 52% efficacy. However, the researcher found the efficacy to, 20, to be 29%. This is why they actually moved to 14 to 20 days and 20 to 27, because they thought that the initial, after dose one, the initial few days were actually not protected and the variants were zipping through the society and so infection rates were higher. So they kind of tried to remove them. If you use that number as well, then the efficacy was actually lower than declared in the trial. However, once you take the time from 14 days onwards, then the efficacy goes up to 57, which is better than 52. Severe cases. Total number of severe cases, this is total number, not a percentage, 10 in these about 600,000 vaccinated folks versus, I believe this, um, what, 229. So, sorry, I'm wrong here. 10 in the trial, and trial was, I think, about 20,000 vaccinated and 20,000 not. So out of those 40,000, 10. Out of these 1.2 million, 229 severe cases. Out of these 229, 174 were severe in non-vaccinated group. And this is important. 55 people became severe even after getting the vaccine. And so that is important. Now, what was that severity or efficacy like? Day one, dose one, 14 to 20 days window, 62% efficacy. 21 to 27 days window, 80% efficacy. And then greater than um, seven days after the second dose, 92. I have written 72, just seven is enough. Day two, greater than seven days after, 92% efficacy. So anyone who is thinking of just taking one dose and looking, just living with that, just please realize it does not look that great. Another interesting note, which I thought was very important, is efficacy in 70, 70 year and above was similar to young. So this was another curiosity that the researchers had. And then concerns about efficacy reduction against variants are not observed. So they did not see that efficacy was reduced too much against the variant. So they were that was still comparable. So that idea of uh, vaccine escape and efficacy reduction and those were not seen here. 
So this is the discussion for today. Let me just see a couple of questions. Maybe we should do a quick um, chit chat as well, and then we stop. So how about we stop here for this dis discussion, and then we uh, do some chit chat as well, and then we break. So please like, subscribe, and share. I'm going to put my little artwork for you here. <laughs> so like, subscribe, and share. And there are three links in the description if you would like to support this work. One link is if you do not want to use a PayPal, then you can buy me coffees. Then there is a link to become a patron, which is awesome. And then there is another link to use PayPal to support this work. Thank you very much. And I would see you in a few minutes.